Hello, what's going on? What is up? Hi then, guys. Another podcast, number 14. And it's a lovely day, but I've just got to talk to you guys, of course. As I always do, why not? I'm back. I'm all better now. Well, apart from this horrible spot on my nose. That actually ruined my passport photo, but we'll get onto that later on. Anyway, guys, I'm back with another podcast. Let's roll the intro, and I'll see you back here in a sec. guys welcome welcome to podcast 14 i'm Lucy 21 your host as always welcome back guys and yeah it's not been as long since the last podcast gotta keep these going gotta keep these regular otherwise what is the point they just won't work and yeah another eventful week <laughs> yeah i just coughed please don't let that be the beginning of me coughing the whole time Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So it's been a long week. I got my Italian passport on the way. That was Monday and then we went to see Avengers Endgame again just for my parents sake. Uh, Because I made them watch Infinity War the other day. Not that they've seen all the Marvel movies in between of each and every character but they've seen most of them they get the overall thing very emotional for them, or well, for me too, even though I've seen it already. Um, but yeah, so the passport photo. Bit of a mug shot, I look like I've been in prison, but it'll have to do. If you've seen that vlog, if you haven't, go and watch that vlog, it's up on my channel. Went up yesterday. And my previous podcast, of course, all about that book that I've been reading that caused me to get sunstroke. The subtle art of not giving an F. Well, it has a lot of good points. A lot of crazy stuff in there that you might not all agree with or see the point of, but yeah. Been reading that again, very interesting. Uh, this part I was reading was more about how people who think they're right and know everything are actually destined to fail because no one can actually know everything. There's a quote by Socrates about, you know, true knowledge is knowing you know nothing. I've used it before on the podcast, like the second one I did years ago, not years ago, but ages, millions and millions of videos ago, anyway, um, so yeah, that was the the general gist, and that, like, your brain isn't always right, it just is always trying to make assumptions and calculations, but it doesn't mean it's right all the time, and there's people who go a long life living a certain way in, in comfort because of certainty, thinking they false certainty thinking they know what a certain action will bring and what the outcome will be like people who don't search for a promotion because they don't actually know if they have the skills and the mental capacity to work at a higher level things like that so it's wrong to do that you just go for it and find out really um but yeah before i get on with the rest of this podcast i want to talk about nicky lauda for a second R.I.P. to the legend, and he passed away yesterday. Uh, he was 70. Um, of course, of recent times, he's been an advisor to Mercedes, you know, to Hamilton, to Rosberg, to Bottas. And yeah, no, he passed away after a lung transplant in August. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's best known for his, um, you know, motorsport skills. And driving and the titles he won with Ferrari and McLaren in the 80s against James Hunt. There was a movie called Rush that showed their rivalry really well. And then, of course, the famous crash that Nicky Lauda almost died from with severe burns to his whole body and a few internal organs. And he survived and went back to racing and was very successful. Had a great career, then went back to to the world of business like. He was, before he was an F1 driver, he was, I don't know if it was accounting or something like that, but like a family business, and then he went back to that. 
And yeah, of course, we knew him nowadays as the advisor for Mercedes and things like that. And he was only 70, but a lot of the injuries, like, affected him for life. Um, but yeah. <coughs> Why am I coughing? Anyway, yeah, so he, he was a legend, a three time winner. Um, you know, all the drivers respected him a lot nowadays. Hamilton, people like. Like, like that, you know. But yeah, 76 was when he suffered the crash and then fought back. The film is amazing, you've got to check the film out. Gives you a big idea of the whole picture. And James Hunt, of course, another legend. So, of their time, they were the best. Their rivalry was like, today, you know, Hamilton, or, well, who's his rival nowadays? You know, it was like when Vettel was at Red Bull and Hamilton was challenging him and vice versa, you know, big rivalries in the sport we've had over the years. And, yeah, sad to hear that, actually. Didn't expect that, because it didn't seem around for a while. Um, but yeah, an F1 legend. And it was, he remained part of the sport for many years. But yeah, that's um, not nice, but yeah, he had, he had a great, great career credit to him. So RIP Nicky Lauda. Anyway, moving on to something a bit more lighthearted. Um, Nigel Farage had the milkshake thrown at him in Newcastle. That's jokes and that's just exactly what he deserved. He deserves a bit more than that, but come on. Not a fan, never have been, never will be. But yeah, it's always good when someone throws a milkshake. Or anything, or, or, you know, just just see the photo. He didn't look too happy, but there was a rumor that he might have paid the guy to do that for publicity. You never know with politicians. Um, he probably did, to be honest. But yeah, what a mug, what a mug he looks like anyway. Only politicians are going to get that kind of stuff thrown at them. <laughs> so what does that mean? Make the guy a terrorist? No. Because it didn't cause terror to anyone, it made everyone laugh. Just called it a bit of annoyance to Farage and, and his, his dry cleaners, basically. But it's just a priceless picture. Had to share that straight away. Just em embarrassing politicians. It's addictive. I do recommend it. <laughs> but yeah, so, as I said, because of Brexit, I had to get my Italian passport to basically enable me to travel to Italy once England are outside the EU. It'll make it easier, that is. Because if coming from a non-EU country, going into EU country will be difficult. And thank you, Brexit, for deciding that England is outside the EU. Or will be. Not yet, but that just kind of helps me having both passports. A lot easier to tra travel the world. Won't be going very far on a British passport soon. But I mean, they say Canadian passports are very sought after now in America. Just because of Trump, I think. Or when he got power, they, they did go up in price. In value. Even Japanese passports. Something to do with, with business, I think. Though. But yeah, so I got my Italian passport on the way. Can't wait for that. It's, it's like being Jason Bourne. But I'm, I'm sure that many of you, or some of you, do have more than one passport, maybe three, two, you know. Um, it's not just me, I'm not the only one. It's quite a common thing to do to, if you're travelling to other parts of the world or from other parts of the world outside the EU. Um, it's not a new thing. It's not literally because of Brexit, but, or it is. It is because of Brexit. So I hate Brexit, basically. That's my, my opinion on it. Whoever's in charge. Well, nobody wants Theresa May in charge anymore. Well, that's what Farage wants. He wants to be in charge. But, okay. Whatever. Crazy person. But I, I hate really talking about politics. But, yeah, it's all you hear about in this country. No other elections you hear about or anything. Uh, only here is important. What's going on here is important. Well, it is, but, like, the rest of the world matters too. And... Well, for me, it's, I just see the difference. And I watch Italian news, and I watch, and I like, Russia Today, 
you see how, how different the news is you watch BBC you know, but just don't watch Fox News there's no credibility there no credibility I wouldn't I mean people do people are gullible and they do moving away from politics just a reminder while I was in Leicester Square going to to see the new Avengers again uh, we, we got stuck in the middle because there was the uh, Rocket Man premiere now I mean I, I've seen Bohemian Rhapsody I know about films made about musicians um, and how good they can be and I've seen that so I don't think anything can top that for me I'm more, more of a Queen fan than Elton John anyway more of a Bowie fan than Elton John but yeah probably well I hear it's qu quite good but every film is bigged up now and then ends up being crap well, all it doesn't in some cases. I hear John Wick Free, Free, John Wick Free did well at the cinema on the first day. Well, I've seen, I've, have I seen the first one? Yeah, I haven't seen it fully, but I've seen most of it. I get the gist of it, and I've seen the second one. But I want to see the third one. But my brother said swears he hasn't seen the other two. I've seen bits of them, but no. Anyway, it's just action and blood and. Violence is good because it's Keanu Reeves, but it's not that good, you know, it's just violence. Can't get any further than that, really. I mean, the story's not bad, but that's the case, though. It's always a retired agent of some kind, you know. Like the Equalizer. The Equalizer is the same scenario, but I think that's a bit better. There's a, you know, Jack Reacher as well. They're all similar kind of films. I don't know what they're, what they're trying to do, but no. If you want a bit of action and violence, they'll work. But bear in mind, I saw a terrible film the other night. Um, Upgrade. Yeah, don't watch that. I do watch it, and then you'll realise what I'm saying. But anyway, yeah. But I mean, my thing about movies, to be honest, if you're talking about movies in general, it's what you take away at the end that matters, really. Like, did you enjoy it? Are you talking about it? Are you laughing? Are you crying? You know, anything. I mean, Avengers leaves a lot of people talking because there's so many questions answered and unanswered at the same time. And then there's all the fan fiction and theories and comic book storylines that they haven't followed ever. And then there's, like, the odd cameo. Where was Stan Lee in this, in this instance? Um, sad that he never got to see this film, like, with the success it had the finale of everything well you might have known like you might have seen the parts the actors were playing and all that but you might not have but he hasn't obviously seen the final product um but yeah there's a lot of talking points um well, it's like with everyone that's seen Game of Thrones they either seem to love it or they hate it oh a voice message from my cousin oh, I'll say that later but anyway everyone seems to love it or hate it Game of Thrones like everyone's pissed off of the uh the actual storyline, like what, what went wrong, like what didn't happen or what did happen. I don't know. I don't watch Game of Thrones, but like, if you watch any show for that length of time, you want a good ending, don't you? I mean, of all the like with Avengers, I know it was movies, but we needed that ending. We needed a good ending, if, and Infinity War Part One and Two, so Endgame and Infinity War, they're both really good in different ways. I'm not gonna give my verdict yet, just in case you haven't seen it, but most of you probably have. But yeah, so there's been a lot of shows like that at the moment. You can never please all the fans. I mean, you can say what is the best TV series of all time. You can't really say. I've got a few favourites. Prison Break, Breaking Bad, The Wire, you know. They're up there, Walking Dead. But I could never say which is the best. Because they're all different at the same time. So I don't know. And there's so many other mini series in between that I've watched. Series that come and go. What the hell? Guys, sorry. Like, <laughs> Siri. If I said Siri, not series. My phone is crazy, guys. I'm telling you, these iPhones are listening to everything. It's listening to me, I'm telling you. It's hearing my podcast right now. Copyright claim right here. Bear in mind, I haven't got any copyright claims of late, but I won't tempt fate. Podcasts, I really make sure I don't get copyright. Because it's like an hour or so. They're going to cut everything out. 
I don't really need music in these podcasts. But, yeah, I'm trying to get back into the swing of it, really. And, well, Monday was helped. It was a good day for vlogging, really. Bumped into an old friend of mine. Did a lot on Monday. Because, of course, we had to get the photos done. Then we went to Marco's, Marco Pierre White's restaurant. Speaking of restaurants, uh, Jamie Oliver went bust. His whole franchise of restaurants, which are actually terrible. I've been to one that was just overpriced garbage. Marco Pierre White is another level, but it's a Michelin star, for Christ's sake. But no, nah, Jamie Oliver, sorry bro, <laughs> basically. That's what I can say to that, I mean, half expected that, and we were like, yeah, I knew it. Like, as a family, we just, things like that, we just slag them off badly, we're like, yeah, we knew it, it was rubbish anyway, yeah. As if we knew. Well, I had an idea. You can never know anything. The brain works in a weird way. But, but come on. Not all chefs do well with their restaurants. Um, some of them go a bit crazy. When they lose all their money and their fame. But, no, I don't know about Jamie Oliver. But it's been on our TVs a long time. you got Gino De Campo now. That actually really annoys my dad. Even though he's Italian. The guy really annoys us for some reason. Because he's a bit exaggerated and a bit fake. Like the way the way he does the accent. I think he's putting on the accent a bit. Like It's just a, the Italian stereotype. It's pure racism. No, it's not racism. But do you know what I mean? That stereotype. Some people love it. But I mean. If I show anyone in Italy. They'd be like. What is this garbage? Is this guy for real? He's just an actor. Come on. But I hear his wife is like a good, a big producer for ITV anyway. That's why it, why he gets on TV, on ITV, on any, on uh, what's it this morning, Good Morning, or whatever. Uh, yeah, one of them shows, the one with Philip Schofield and uh, Holly Willoughby, whatever her name is. But yeah, so that's the reason you're on there as part, as far as I can see anyway. I don't know, but I mean, having a producer wife is gonna help. So good for him. So all you need to do, guys, is marry a producer, and you'll be fine. But yeah, I want to answer that message, and I'll be right back. Not that you actually know, because all I'm going to do is press pause. Beep. Moving on. Answered all my messages. I'm back. I'll probably get more messages now. I've replied, but yeah, that's how it works. Anyway, yeah, the more I do these podcasts, the more I realise just chill out, just say whatever, it doesn't really matter too much. I try not to put too much thought into them. Sometimes I do more than others if I've got a particular topic. This one is just an update, just keeping you up to date. What's going on in the world, because sometimes I feel like I could just make a little vlog and talk about all this, but then it, it, it risks being a long vlog uh, as a result, and I save the vlog more for days when I go out. But I do need a haircut, I'm telling you. I do need to highlight my hair again, so I'm told, um, for the summer, yeah. And yeah, with this bruise on my nose, I just can't, it's a kind of like scab, but I can't go in the sun at the moment because of that. I'm trying to avoid that, just using Vaseline just to keep it not from getting worse, basically. And hopefully that'll go, yeah. I mean, typ typical, the week I do my photo, for my new passport, I've got a huge spot on my nose. But, it doesn't matter really. It's just a photo really. There I am moaning to everyone like, oh no, it's disgusting. I look like I've been in prison. I'm kind of frowning, I don't know why I was frowning. You know when someone you don't even know is taking a picture of you. You don't know how to act like. You don't want to do a pose because you can't really pose for a po passport. To do a serious like normal face. Nobody likes their passport photo. And I hate mine, to be honest. I hate my driving license one. Because it's... I swear to God, I look like Sonic the Hedgehog. I didn't know I ever had my hair that long. But for so many years, I look back at old photos. More recent than I care to admit. And think, what was that haircut? Like, maybe... I look at photos from when I, even when I was like, what? 19, 20. It's like, what is that? Like, why? Jesus. Like, and I look back when I was at secondary school. I was just so cute. 
like, n not like man me in any way. Well, who is it? A teenage years, but I was just too cute. Uh, and it, it, I look do look younger than I, I am. And well, the moustache helps not look too young. But every now and then I shave it off, and I realise, no, I need my moustache back. So I lose all, all, all vlogging power. I don't know. I don't know. Some people get, go for the full-on beard. I, I wouldn't really do that. Um, I can't really grow a full-on beard, but moustache I can pull off pretty easily. People take years. I mean, for a long time, I didn't have much facial hair. Last four, five years, three, four years. When I started uni, I mean, I didn't. For example, and even then, I had a bad haircut. Jesus. But, you know, we always look back and we learn, innit? And we try to be better versions of ourselves. If that's possible. Or, like in my book I've read, it says, like, you try to be less wrong. Not right, but less wrong than you were before. If that makes any sense. It does to me because you do become less wrong. Because you learn a bit more as you grow. You know, with experience in whatever it is. So then you do, you don't, you kind of, yeah, you're less wrong about certain things. You're more likely to be right. Like when you give someone else advice, what you're saying can't necessarily be wrong. If you're of a certain age and you've lived a certain amount of life, people don't get it. Some people don't. I mean, don't get me wrong, like the title for that book doesn't really make sense because it is the opposite of what, really what the title saying in some ways. You do have to give an F about something, or a few things, the things that matter really, and it's differentiating that I think. But here I am going back to talking about that book every time. Anyway, so yeah, another thing I haven't mentioned, I mentioned this? Yeah, anyway, the Spurs final, Champions League final against Liverpool, it's the 1st of June, I had the Muse concert the same day, same day. Not going to the Muse concert. Didn't get tickets to the final. So I'm staying at home and watching the Spurs. Final up the Spurs. Can't wait for it. But yeah, what a crazy kind of situation. I had a Muse concert that I really wanted to go to. And my brother still wants to go. He might still go, but I can't do both. There's no way. I mean, the concert, like, whole thing starts at five. The band won't come out till like eight or nine. Match will start at like, what, eight or 7.45 or whatever. I got a few mates who were going, so credit to them. Well done, up the Spurs. It's going to be an amazing atmosphere. It's a lot of people thought it was. Is it? A, no, it's not the Burner Bars. Uh, the the Atletico Madrid Stadium. I forget the name. Is it Mustai or something? No, it's not. It's it's not. Anyway, yeah, it's in Madrid. It's going to be crazy because it's our first final. Like the Spurs fans were like, oh yeah, last final we're in. When? Champions League, when? Final, you know what I mean? Do you understand? If we win this, you Arsenal fans have to go and hide for the rest of your lives because there'll be nothing you can say. Nothing you can say to a Spurs fan after we win it. If we win it. So we better bloody win it. Beat those Scousers, come on, they won it enough times. Let us have it. But I mean, they've been to the final last year. Doesn't mean they're going to win it. But, you know they got more experience of a final but they got experience losing a final and that's only going to make you want to win more so whatever happens it'll be a good game if it starts becoming a goal fest then I fear that Liverpool might win they'll just outscore us because remember we did beat City but it was an away goal and technically we lost that game so if that happens again we're out we're, we're gone it has to be steady and calm and slow and like 1-0, 2-1 that kind of game you have to control the game. Poch knows this. Like, as if I'm telling him. But yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be bloody stressful. I mean, I've watched Italy in that final 06 and they won it, but that was bloody stressful. At times I thought we were going to lose it. You know, the famous Zidane headbutt. Just like bang out of nowhere. Well, I don't know what. We, don't, we never know to this day what exactly Madarazzi said. Something about Zidane's sister or his mum. <laughs> and yeah, he got a head, head bar. 
no no other no other, no other way to to stress over a final than that one. Literally when we scored my uncle lifted my brother up and he head by the ceiling. He kinda hit the ceiling. Or the chandelier, I can't remember. But yeah, my other uncle was outside not watching it, like typical like he always does. My dad was like, Come on, we're gonna win this like he, from the beginning of the tournament he was like we're gonna win this. I mean because in eighty two we weren't the best at the beginning and and we ended up winning it. You felt that as well. I, I didn't know I was too young to really understand football and tactics at that age. But I could see some genius players in that pitch. Pirlo, one example of that. Just some beasts as well. De Rossi, Gattuso, uh, Grosso, you know, so many legends in that team. But we've had stronger teams who have lost. For example, Baggio, 94, when he missed that penalty at that Italian team, was de was supposed to win it. You know, and you always have that time when you're supposed to and you don't. When you're not supposed to and you do. And Italy did that in that final with the penalties. I just don't want the Spurs one to go to penalties. No way, I'd just be too stressful. I mean, Italy's Italy, but Spurs, my local team. I mean, even when England play, England were playing, when we got to the semis, that was stressful for everyone here. It was great, that feeling. I mean, Spurs, when we beat City, it kind of felt like that as well. That kind of feeling, like anything's possible. It's the same kind of situation, except we're in, we're in the final. England didn't get so lucky. But yeah, that's that's football. And it's always the same, isn't it? It's bringing people together, making people crazy at the same time. There's going to be a lot of arguments in this house about what's what, because after the Ajax game, and I was like, no, we're out. 2 0 down, I was like, we're out, we lost this. And Dad was like, oh, shut up, we're nowhere near the end. And obviously, he was right again. I don't know. I don't know about betting on this either. If you bet on your own team, it's difficult. Some people bet against their own team out of knowing them so well, but never, no, no. I used to do a bit of gambling, a bit of betting on football, then I got fed up because it was just too much. I had to like watch all the matches on a Saturday, uh, like at three o'clock and I was like, or midday or whenever they were, like study all the teams and stuff. Just couldn't be bothered. But some, it's just guesswork really. But I thought there was some sort of method to it. I don't know if there is. I don't reckon there is, it's just a gut feeling. You either win or lose though. But it's not like the lottery, you just run the lottery and you, you give num the numbers you think. It's not about, you know, tactics or anything. But yeah, there we go. It's gonna be exciting the first of June. Yeah, first of June. Not it's not a long away. I mean we're on the twenty second now. Twenty second of May. It's not that warm for May, I'll be honest, it needs to be. Where is this summer that we're waiting for? We're in summer, come on. You know? I mean, I got ill in Italy, didn't I, really, all that rain? But it was nice here. So where, where's this lovely weather now? We're the hotter Easter than we're having now in England. But yeah. But yeah, moving on. So I've got like, a dilemma like, with these videos. I always feel like I can do more. Like, I have that feeling that I'm not doing good enough. Everyone has that. The motivation to do better. That's a good thing, but like, is it worth me doing that? I don't know. I feel like I could be doing more videos. There's a stage where I was pumping out videos. Don't know how I did that. Like, then I realized, like, hold on. What's the point if they're not that good? I'm not saying they're not that good, but what's the point churning out these videos if there's no, like, story to it at the end or something the viewer can take away I mean that's why I started doing more podcasts it's a more realistic side because in a vlog I want to just use more energy and be more crazy but that's this really it's not quite me but I, I, I kind of do that or try to but when you're vlogging on the street it's different it's documenting what's going on really I'm always trying to get that good angle like that good time lapse uh, I love doing that it's like the really creative part but when you're with people, your family and stuff, you haven't always got time to stop and do that. When I go out down the street and stuff, I get more creative when I've got the time and the space. But when you're actually going somewhere, you don't have that same thought process. Thinking about getting where you're going and stuff. And, you know, stop and, like, film a certain alleyway at a certain angle or a road or something. Get a shot of a building. 
family just like, what are you doing? My brother is the worst. He's just like, it's like, I'll come on wing all the time in a while, you know. Just get fed up and start swearing. Just start frowning face. Turn that frown upside down in your mug. But yeah. So he was away this weekend going to see a good friend of ours. George, Georgie boy. And his other half, Beth. So credit to Mass for going to Farnham. Why do I do the accent? I don't know. So well done, Mass, for going there. Seeing your friends makes a check. Well, it doesn't make a change, but normally he's going to see a bird. If you know what I mean. You know, we've all been young. We've all been there. <laughs> but yeah, I want to enjoy this weather too, to be honest. To be honest. If I can still speak King's English and Italian, bear in mind. Um, you remember when I did that? You remember when I did all those podcasts in Italian? A lot of people tried to understand both, but I admit it was confusing for me. I didn't get what I was saying and what I was not saying, and saying the same thing in English and in Italian, realising I couldn't quite directly translate off the stuff I was saying. Even now I resort to Google, resort to Google Translate. And lucky I know my Italian because half the translated stuff is just wrong. Like you see when you're on Instagram and you translate a, a, you know, a post, a status or whatever they write, whatever someone writes, it never comes out right. Like I've read one, I've translated Italian ones to English and I've read them as just not grammatically correct in either language. If you know what I mean, like, both ways I've had the same situation. But yeah, that's that's translators for you. They never work. Like, you just have literally have to persevere with it when you're in a country that's not your own. We had this issue in France um, on the way to Italy where they did not speak any other language. So it was, it was difficult, but we got there in the end. Um, may have offended them slightly, saying words that didn't even mean anything. Or my dad just busted out Italian, assuming everyone loves Italian, so they speak Italian. But not in this case. <laughs> that was just cringe. It was cringe just trying to ask for simple things like ice. But anyway, speaking of France, um, my a few friends of mine who play for the French a friend of mine who plays with the French national team is going out to Denmark for the uh, Europeans, of course the England team are there too um, some of my teammates well, my ex-teammate and a lot of friends of mine that play for the England team some newer than others so I'm, I'm happy for them but yes, yeah, so I've been following the journey of both sides the French and the British in some sense um, but yeah, there's a few other local teams I don't know if Finland have a team it's like Denmark, Ireland, Republic of Ireland. Um, you know, so quite a few teams, but come on England, of course. Um, yeah, they always seem to meet France in these tournaments at some point, because they're both sublime teams, top teams in Europe, probably the best. So if they're in finals, I'm not surprised. But yeah, I'm gonna be watching that somehow live stream somewhere, try and find it like I've watched the World Cup in the past. Because it is the top level of football, and it's the pinnacle, you know. Like I met a lot of the other, like the Danish team, the, the most of the Irish team in Denmark when I went for the Europeans because they have their their like their teams they play for, and the French of course made friends with a few of them. So credit to all these players that are going there to try and win. Of course, they're all in it to win it. It's always you know you always say taking part, but really. You know, you want to win. I mean, all, all these schools now trying to make kids get medals for like ninth place. Come on, you got to be a bit competitive. You're not going to succeed at everything, but when you fail, you got to know you failed, so you can do better next time. If you get a medal for finishing last, then you're going to not mind finishing last. Don't get too comfortable, is what I say. But yeah, this is the Europeans, so national teams, so England. The onus is on them to try and win it. I mean, they've come very close in World Cups. Uh, I've been, we've been all very proud of them. Let them win. Let's, let's see them win this. Come on, boys. It's coming home. Bring it home. Because the Real England team couldn't do it. I'd say we're, we're better than the Real England team. They're better than the Real England team. Like in the world of Padre football teams, yeah, compared to the Real England football team, yeah. 
they're up there. They're up there. I mean, the French have a few more players that have been together longer, like more experience. But England also have a few, and they have some new blood as well, which is always good for the future. Got to consider that. I mean, some teams don't. They stick with the same players. France make their starting lineup is always pretty much the same. All legends, of course, all really good for their own teams. Uh, I think two of them are in the same team. But yeah, so that'll be fun to watch. It's another thing that'll be going on. And yet to come, yet to be shown on here, the video from the last weekend in Nottingham, where we didn't get promoted, but we had a great season anyway. Um, but yeah, we've got an end of season party for the whole team, trying to organise that. There's a lot of us, bear in mind, if you include family and siblings and stuff. So there's a bit going on, fair bit. I want to enjoy this weather if it lasts. I'm going to get a haircut before I see you next, probably. But, um, yeah. Let me see how long we've been going for. Yeah, so guys. Probably not my, my longest podcast. But, yeah. Just an update. Um, I'm going to keep these regular. Maybe not this regular, because then I have a bit more to say. A bit more to plan out, really. But what do you think? Do let me know. In some way or another, drop a like. Thank you guys. I mean, without you I wouldn't be here. Still going. Whether I'm making money on here or not, this is what I do. Uh, this is the life. Vlog life, podcasting life. Whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I'm back, baby. I'll keep going and coming back, but yeah. That's how it is. And we've got a big summer planned. A lot of vlogging in Italy to do. More in-depth, probably more interactive than usual. So I'm always guilty of that, I feel. I, I don't include people enough and like, introduce people and stuff just because I'm so used to the way my brother is, like, not wanting to be filmed. Oh, I'm CIA. I'm secret agent. You can't film me now. Well, that's not how he speaks or what he says. But you know what I mean? Like, so I, f I assume everyone's like that. But it's, when someone says, I don't want a camera in my face, that's fair enough, but I've got to be more in your face as a vlogger, I think. For the sake of you guys seeing more of my life, and the ups and downs, really. Uh, it's got to be realistic, of course. I'm qu quite realistic with the vlogs. You know, I'm not the Logan Paul style where just half of it is literally for the video. And like the other day was what? Giving a homeless guy money, like put it in front of a fan. Let the homeless guy catch all the money. Then everyone caught the money and gave him all the money. I mean, you don't need to publicise helping the poor. And there's probably a better way you could have done it help more than one person not just pick out one guy you know but yeah oh, you know Mr Beast look at him just goes around giving people loads of money for free just to see how they react I don't know if he's doing it out of kindness or what but well he must be to some extent but yeah so that that is what's going on you're all up to date I think guys thank you for joining me once again it is episode podcast episode 14 we made it guys almost 15 episodes still going strong i want to do more and more of these more often i might have to sit outside and do them to be honest i don't ever want to hear my gossip but yeah guys louise 21 fam forever you are the 21 fam for life don't forget that keep doing what you love keep working every day don't quit don't think you're always right though don't go thinking that everything you do is is you know don't don't fall in trap of being certain about everything. Just know that it's an open book. Life is an open book, or a podcast, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's just you don't know what's going to happen, good or bad. You know, can't control everything that happens. All you do is have the responsibility to how you react to it, how you react to all these things that happen. Just keep it real, guys. Thank you, as always. Peace and much love. Take it easy, fam. Peace. Bye. One, two, three. Wait, no, you turn it off first. Ah. You know what I'm saying? I come back stronger. You know, I'm not talking ignorant. You know what I'm saying?